welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat, in which we would look at cost of investing in mutual funds. This topic is covered in an essentials or principle of investments, whether graduate or undergraduate. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorial. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlist. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. Share the wealth and connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources, whether you are studying for your finance courses or accounting courses, studying for your CPA, CFA, or CMA exam. I strongly suggest you check out my website. So before we talk about the expenses associated with buying mutual funds, we want to know how mutual funds are sold. Well, mutual funds are sold directly, basically from the fund underwriter. The underwriter is the person that create the fund. They can sell it to you directly. They can sell it to you through mail, their offices, over the phone or over the internet. Most, most, most of the time you buy funds usually over the internet. And if you have a broker, you can buy through the broker. Investor or con can contact the fund directly to purchase the shares. And usually you do so through the internet. You can also buy them indirectly through what's called uh, Salesforce. And who are the Salesforce? Basically, we're talking here about brokers or financial advisors. And those people, they receive a commission for selling you shares. Now, we're going to talk about the commission shortly about, you know, what's, what, what type of commission you get charged by, for buying a mutual fund. But you have a keep, to keep in mind when you buy it indirectly, there could be a potential conflict of interest because the broker or the financial advisor may not be recommending the best fund for you. Why not? Because they might be getting a fee. And if that fee is higher for them, they may recommend the fund that generate more fees for them. So just be careful about that. The best way is to read the prospectus and determine if that's a good investment for you or not. Also, mutual fund can be sold through financial supermarkets like banks, insurance company that can sell shares of many different funds. So those are the three ways that you can buy a mutual fund. Now, it's very important to understand the fee structure of a fund. How are you going to be charged? Because fee is important. When you are charged a fee, that's going to lower your return. So it's very important to understand the different type of fees. OK, so an individual investor choosing a mutual fund should consider not only the fund stated investment policy and past performance, especially past performance doesn't indicate future performance, but also fees and other expenses, because what matter is what is my return at the end of the day? Now, what, what can you learn about mutual fund? You can go to something called a Morganstar mutual fund source book, and it will show you the different types of funds. You can find it in your public library. You should also be aware of the four general classes of fees when it comes to mutual funds. Operating expenses, front end load, back end load, and 12B-1 fees or charges. And now I'm going to I'm going to be talking about each one of those separately. Let's start with operating expenses. From the word operating expenses, it's cost incurred to operate the portfolio. And what type of cost do we do we have to operate this portfolio? Well, maybe administrative cost, maybe advisory fees, pay to investment managers, and these costs generally ranges from 0.2 to 1.5 percent of the assets under management. So this is how, usually so it's there's no dollar amount. It's usually a percentage of the dollar amount. And those expenses are periodically deducted from the asset of the fund. So they don't send you a bill for those expenses. Simply put, they will take it from the fund. They will deduct it from the fund. And it, just to give you an idea, the simple average of the expense ratio of all equity funds in the US was 1.82 1, 1, 1. in 2016. Now, the average expense differ between the different type of funds. For example, if you are dealing with index fund, index fund means you're, you're following a specific index, so you're not really active. It's as low as 0 0.09. If it's an active fund, it could range in the 0 0.82. Obviously, active is more expensive than basically index fund is passive. You buy the shares and you don't do any research. You don't have any research because just following the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ 100 versus an active fund, you have to do research, buy and sell. Also, in addition to those operating expenses, most fund assess a fee for marketing and distribution, distribution cost. They use primarily those to pay the broker or the financial advisors who sell the funds. OK, so investors can avoid these expenses by buying shares directly from the fund sponsor. 
Okay, but many investors they're willing to incur this distribution in return for advice. So that's what you're that's what you're paying for, really. So those are the operating expenses. You could also have what's called front end load. And what's a front end load? It's when you buy the shape when you buy the mutual fund, there is a fee up front. So commission or sales when you purchase the shares. It's a front end when you enter your position. These charges which are primarily used to pay the broker who sell the funds may not exceed 8.5 but in practice they range no higher than six percent and that's pretty expensive uh, I, I i don't like front end load because they take their money up front but that's personal preference i know my friend he put you know he uses a front end load mutual fund that's fine it's 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 your preference there's low load funds have loads ranges up to three percent of invested funds so there's low load you know, regular front load could be up to 6%. And there's no load funds that have no front end sales charge. No load, that means I don't charge you anything by entering the position. And about half of all funds have no load. Basically, you, you don't pay anything up front. Okay. Basically, load effectively, and this is important, reduce the amount invested. So if you invested $100,000 and there's a 5% front end load, that's, they will take away 5,000 and you're starting your investment at 95,000. So it's you, you want to make sure you're aware of this. For example, each $1,000 paid for a fund with a 6% load in sales charges, which is it means they're going to take away $60, you are left with 940. Now to go up to go back up to $1,000, the fund will have to earn 6.4% to go up from 940 back to your original investment so simply put the first 6.4 percent of the cumulative return is the fee paid to the broker that's the front end we also have what's called a back end load back end load you pay it when you're exiting your position when you're selling your position it's a redemption or an exit fee when you sell the shares these uh, typically fund that impose this they will start at five or six percent and what happened ev every year you keep your fund they would reduce it for example if you uh, if you wait two years the six becomes four if you wait another year it becomes three so on and so forth so they give you an incentive to keep the money with them to keep the money with them so so an exit fee that started at six would fall to four by the start of the third year these charges are uh, formally known as contingent deferred sales load. That means contingent based on your exit. In other words, they want to encourage you to keep your money with them as long as possible. Therefore, your fee will go down when you sell. We also have what's called 12B1 fees or charges. That's an annual charge. Notice this is an annual charge uh, by the mutual fund to pay for marketing, usually for the broker, and distribution costs for annual report and prospectus. So those 12 12B-1 fees are named after the SEC rule that permit the use of these plans. So this is basically here we're talking about something related to the SEC. That's the fee. So here's what's going to happen. Those funds may use the annual 12B charges in addition or instead. So it could be in addition to the front end loads. So they will charge you an upfront fee and they will charge you an annual fee. And the reason is to generate fees to pay for the broker. Now, also, as with the operating fees and all other fees, they are not you're not explicitly billed. They'll simply they will take the money from the from the fund. They will deduct the money from the fund, just like with the or the other fund. So 12B1, if any, must be added to operating expenses to obtain the true annual expense ratio. So you have to make sure when you're looking at your mutual fund performance, what matters is after all the expenses. So 12B-1. You have to deduct them, just like you have to deduct the front end if there's any back end, operating expenses, so on and so forth. So the SEC require all funds to include in the prospective a consolidated expense table that summarizes all the relevant fees. So when you look at your prospectus, you should know, and it should be pretty straightforward and uh, being able to read those fund to read those expenses usually they're limited the 12b-1 to 1 percent of the funds average net asset per year so asset minus expenses you will take out one percent so how do we measure the return on the portfolio well it's the measure of the difference between the beginning of the period and the end of the period hopefully it's an increase not a decrease that's one 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 factor of the return plus any income distribution, such as dividend or distribution of capital gain, expressed as a fraction of net asset value at the beginning of the year. So simply put, when you buy 
a mutual fund. You buy it at a certain price. You look at the end of the year. If the price is higher, that's part of your return. And if they gave you any money or dividend or distribution, that's also part of your return. Okay. So if we donate the net asset value at the start of the period as N0, uh, NAV0 and NAV1 at the end of the period, this is how we measure the return. So NAV1, the end of the period minus the beginning of the period plus any income and capital gain distribution divided by the original cost, NAV0. So let's take a look at an example. If we're looking at an NAV at the start as $20, uh, makes an income distribution of 15 pennies and a capital gain distribution of 5 pennies and it end up to be uh, $20.10. Okay, so how do we measure the monthly return? Look, the difference in the price, uh, the difference in the price is 10 pennies plus, plus you earned 0 0.05 in capital gain distribution plus 15 pennies in distribution and you invested twenty dollars and a v zero all in all this is going to give us one point five percent return one point five percent so again this is your ten pennies the difference in the beginning so this is you made ten pennies on the price of the of the mutual fund you add to it the income distribution the capital gain divided by the original price you'll get one point five percent so let's take a look at expenses and how do expenses affect the rate of return? Obviously, how do they affect it? It will bring it down, obviously. So let's assume a fund with $100 million in asset at the beginning of the year with 10 million shares outstanding. The fund invests in a portfolio of stocks that provide no income but increases by value of 10%. The expense ratio, including the 12B-1 fees, is 1%. So all the expense, they everything is one percent what is the rate of return for an investor in the fund well the initial nav you'll take 100 million divided by 10 million shares you are buying an nav of ten dollars that's that's your original cost in the absence of the expenses what's going to happen the fund will go up to 110 million and the nav will become eleven dollars so you bought something at 10 it went up to 11 okay which is a rate of return one divided by 10 it gives you a rate of return of 10 percent but what's going to happen is the fund it's going to take one percent the expense ratio of the fund is one percent therefore one million dollar will be deducted leaving the portfolio with 109 million therefore the nav if we compute if we take 109 million divided by 10 million shares the nav is 10 million ten dollars and 90 cent it went down therefore if we take 90 pennies divided by ten dollars your rate of return is 10 percent simply put the expenses ate up one percent of your return and that's a lot of money if you have no the equity fund sells class a shares with no front end um with a front end load of four percent so there's a front end load of four percent and class b shares with 12.1 12b-1 fees of 0.5 percent as well as a back end load fees remember the back end is when you exit starting at five and falls by one percent after each year as the investor holds the portfolio until the fifth year so simply put if you wait five years you can cash out and you will not have any back end load fees that's that's the key assume the return on this fund portfolio is net of net of operating expenses is 10 percent what will the value of 10 percent investment in class a and class b shares after one year four years and ten years so this is just an exercise to show you what happened over the years with different fee structures so which fee structure provide higher net proceeds at the end of each investment horizon that's what we're looking for so simply put a the net investment in class a shares after the four percent commission you are starting for at nine thousand six hundred if we earn ten percent simply put we're going to take ten thousand nine thousand six hundred times one plus the interest rate raised to the nth power and power one two three four five ten, all the way till ten so this is how we find the return for class a for class b the shares has no front end load however the net return uh, the net return to the investor after 12b-1 fees will be only 9.5 why because there is 10 percent minus 0. 0.5 therefore 9.5 but remember starting year one year two year three you still have to deduct you know after year one you have to deduct four percent after year two three percent so there's also you have to reduce your percentage until year five so let's take a look at the actual numbers and see what it looks like so after a year 
class A will take 9,600 times one times the one time one plus the interest rate raised to the nth power hopefully you know this formula from your principles of finance so after one year your return is 10,560 for class B you have 10,000 times the rate of return is 9.5 because they take 0.5 for the 12b-1 fee times you're going to keep only 96 percent because there is a four percent back end fee so your return is 10,512 so notice in the short horizon a is doing better one year in the medium horizon which is four years later the return for class a is 14,500 and $55 for class B will take 10,000 times again 1.95 raised to the fourth power now you are keeping 99% because this is the last time you are responsible the last year you are responsible for any back end fee therefore in the medium horizon if you sell now you will do better than class A because you will get 14,232 remember starting in year five there's no 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 back end for class b but also after year four after year five what happened is class a would would recover that four percent that they paid up front so when we get to year 10 notice class a will have twenty four thousand almost nine hundred dollars twenty four thousand nine hundred dollars for b you will take ten thousand times again nine point five there's no more back end fee but you're still paying this 0.5 class a going forward don't have to worry about you know any fees anymore but you are paying that repeated that repeated fees therefore you will get 24,782 you may not think that's a big difference but if you add zeros to these numbers you know millions if these numbers are in millions then it makes a huge difference you're talking millions of dollars difference in return so therefore um, and the sh you can see in the short short horizon, medium horizon, and long term horizon, which one does better in the long term horizon, 10 years or more, class A will do better. So it's very important that you understand how the fee is structured for your portfolio. And also what's important when you invest in a mutual fund is the taxation aspect, because guess what? After you make your profit, here comes Uncle Sam, give me a share of it. So you wanna understand how taxation work because your true return, your true return, is after taxes this is what matters to you as an investor not what they're quoting you it's how much am I gonna get after my operating expenses 12b-1 and my taxation so in the next session we'd look at the taxation aspect of mutual fund again if you like this recording please like it and share it put it in playlist don't forget to visit my website forheadlectures.com if you are looking for additional resources to succeed in this course good luck study hard and stay safe